edition of 30 Minutes of Therapy. I'm Dental Products Report and Dental Practice Management Editorial Director, Noah Levine. And with us as always is your dental coach, the CEO and founder of both Staff Driven Dental and Dental Coaching On Demand, Mike Masoto. Mike, thanks for joining us as always. No, it's great to see you again. Well, you're not lying down. I think it's, uh, don't you, aren't you supposed to be lying on your couch? For, or no, it only works. <laughs> you should have the, the doctors lie down who are listening to this, right? <laughs> I don't think I can get the camera angles to work. So, you know, I, I'll be sitting up. But uh, I'm just here as a proxy for all the dentists and other dental professionals in our audience. Uh, yes. And yes. it's all those professionals we want to talk about today. Because we want to talk about dealing with the people in the practice. Your team has got to work as a team. And sometimes that means there's conflicts between people and whether it's one person thinking another person isn't doing their job properly or one person just upset about someone over something that has nothing to do with work, those disputes can really disrupt a practice. So when you walk into a practice that you're gonna be helping and you see that there is disarray and disputes happening in the staff, how do you go about addressing this? How do they clear up that issue? Well, first of all, that never happens, bro. I know what you're talking about. I never, I never walk into a practice where there's upset and dispute with the team. That never occurs, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll try. I'll try to make something <laughs> up uh, about this whole thing. But the first thing that doctors understand is like, you're not alone. You know, every, every practice I walk into, there's a, there's a problem with the team. You know, and it, it's funny because I, I tell a classic story of a doctor one time who called me in. And he says, you know, you're going to meet them in a little while and you're going to meet my team and whatever. You're going to see what I'm talking about, you know, why there's so much problems with them and everything. And I said, OK, doc, you know, and I'll, let me just do my observation. Don't tell me too much. Let me see what's going on. And we'll spend a day with the team. And, you know, then he calls me back in and he'll ask for, you know, my analysis. And I'll say, see, see what I, what I tell you? you. You met them all. What do you what do you think? I said, <laughs> and the funny story goes is I go, doc. You have a great team. You just wrecked them. <laughs> That's what I said. He's like, what? What are you talking about? I said, I said, I said, Doc, did you really put it like run an ad in the paper? Bad hygienist wanted, must drive me crazy, cut corners, inquire within. You didn't, you didn't write that ad, okay? You hired these people or keep these people here because you thought they were good, right? And then, then the apparency, they became bad over time. Like what happened? Why do we have bad team with all this dis upset, upset and disharmony and conflict in the practice? Right? Why is that occurring? Okay, because you got to nurture this team. You can't just throw a team in place and like everybody's supposed to join hands, sing kumbaya, and everything's supposed to work perfectly together like magic. You know, because how do most teams come together? You know, well, I bought the place and she came with the place. You know, great, great. It was a great investment. You know, you brought her along with the practice, right? So nice deal. I said, oh, so I say, no, I said, Mary, you came with the practice, a great deal, right? So you got that one from this one and this one from this one and this one from here, and we mush them all together like that, and they're supposed to just all jive. Look. For those of you that are lucky, sometimes it works that way. But for the most part, you have to put time. You know, what does your team want more than anything else from you? And here's the secret of that. They want your quality attention. That's what they want, Doc, because, you know, you are basically the leader in the practice. So if you're not giving them quality attention and quality time, like, you know, you just kind of blow past them and you're running to your room and you're doing your thing, your, your office door is closed, that kind of thing, they feel like you don't care, you know, and you become disconnected. You know, I just did a dental road where it's funny you brought this topic up today <laughs> when I got the topic and I don't know if you saw it, but it's, I definitely recommend people watching it. My dental latest episode of the dental road where I do a YouTube series, which is kind of like my 10 minutes of therapy from the road on various topics. And the one I just did, well, I called it the DDS disconnect or the DMD disconnect, you know, and meaning, and, and what, what that is, is that doctors have a tendency to want to be disconnected or to get disconnected from different parts of their practice. Maybe the business part, that's the, that's the main part. You know, they're, they're very well connected to clinical, you know, and when they're doing their clinical stuff and they're really engaged with their patients when they're in their room and they're in their, in their mouth, but they get tunnel vision. They're just focusing on what's going on in that, that particular mouth at that particular time. And meanwhile, there's this whole global thing, you know, going on in their operations around them all day long. But they're just disconnected from, they have no clue what's going on. Yeah? And then before they know it one day, like, what the hell's happening here? Why is this, why is this so crazy? What, what's, what occurred? Well, it's because you're at, you're out of communication. You're not in communication with your practice, you know, and that can take many forms. You know, the one we're talking about is staff today, but it could happen like with your finances and not knowing what's going on with my money. I can't tell you how many times I talk to a doctor who doesn't know the numbers at this point until they until they talk to their accountant and they get the, the bad news, you know, at the end of a quarter or the end of a year. 
that kind of thing, where they don't have any goals and they don't know where they're, where they're, where they're tracking or trending so far, but they get disconnected from it, you know, or they're not even aware. They don't, there's no checks and balances. And then one day they find, oh my God, she's been stealing from me. I said, you, this is right in plain sight. You should, if you were looking at that and monitoring it all, you know, you would have known this was the case. And that's an extreme example, for example. But, but the big disconnect is not being in communication with your team. You know, and this is what causes upsets, you know, in your practice because you are not being a leader in setting how uh, how our, our culture and environment of our practice is going to work together as a group. How are we all going to, you know, mesh here, you know, and create a, a nice environment for all of us to get together in our little community that we're working together, right? I mean, so you, you spend as much time with some of these people as you do with your own spouse, right? You don't, so that's how many hours you spend in the office. Think about that. So better, it's like a marriage. You better make it work. And the way you're going to make it work is to spend time on it and be in communication with them. And there's many ways uh, to do that. And, and if you have the upsets in your practice, it's because you probably have broken agreements. You know, and this is a big part of what I do is making agreements and keeping them. Okay? All you have in your life is your word, right? I mean, if you give, you give your word to your staff and say something, you, it comes out of your mouth, it's your word, and you don't do it, or you don't follow through or you ignore it, you're going to create upsets. You know, so making and keeping agreements with your team is a good start, you know, and that, that's what you need to do because the opposite of agree is what, Noah? Okay, this little, little, little English class. What's the opposite of agree? Disagree. <laughs> Disagree, you know, and if you have disagreements and disharmony up in there, it's because you're, you, never, you don't have any good agreements in place, you know? A big, a big area is, is the, the employee handbook. You know, people think they have to have an employee handbook because legally they have to have it, you know, because they want to protect themselves. And I can do a whole show on that one day because that is important. You know, massively important in this day and age because this is a, a flavor of the times we live in right now of uh, employment law stuff. Okay. But if you want to avoid employment law stuff, keep your staff happy, you know, and morale high and then and being in good communication with them. So even if there is some kind of problem, you quickly resolve it and move forward, right? That's important. But in having an employee handbook, I just call that the rules for happy living in your practice. You know, and you, it lays out the, these are the agreements and the expectations as a team member in my practice that you can expect when you come in to work here. And we always refer to the book. You know, well, how does sick, what about sick time? You know, what about time off? What about bereavement? What if someone, you know, someone passes away? What if, someone get, what if I get pregnant? You know, what happens with bonus? What happens with this? It's all in there. And it's fair and equitable for everybody and for everybody to see. And that becomes a, an agreement that they sign off and you manage them by agreement. Okay, not by emotion. Key point from today, today's therapy session. You want, you want to have less stress and less time on the couch, okay, so to speak. Manage by agreement, not by emotion. Because we get all emotionally upset and, you know, and crazed about everything else. If you just manage by agreement, you wouldn't have all these upsets and breakdowns with your staff in, in the practice. Like, well, this is the agreement. We agreed to this. But, you know, like, Michelle, I love you, and you're great and wonderful, but we made an agreement that you're supposed to be here at this time today to start the day for huddle, and you were half an hour late. Okay? And I'm sorry that, you, that that disqualifies you now potentially from bonuses month until you make it right. Okay? That kind of thing takes all the emotion out of the whole thing. Well, I have my good staff, but I, I'll treat them a certain way. But then I have my bad staff, so I'll slam them. Okay? First of all, that's not fair, not equitable. And you're going to get yourself into problems later on. A favoritism. If you show favoritism from one person over another, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't look good. Then you get people upset because, wait a minute, you know, he, he's her favorite and he's not, he, I'm not her favorite. It's a problem. Okay. So you don't want to have those, those, those issues with staff with the in terms of, uh, you can cut me off anytime you want to. Yeah. Uh, I'll go 30 minutes without talk, you talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm mostly just listening, but you've brought up, I kind of have two things I would love to kind of deal, delve sure. deeper into. Yeah. And they both deal with the doctor as the leader of the practice. The first being, you talked about taking the emotion out of dealing with your staff, having a kind of preset standards that everyone agrees to knows and in doing that how important is it for the doctor to keep their own emotions in check and not get drawn into all of this do they set the tone for the whole operation and if so how do they make sure that they're setting a tone that's going to create harmony that's an awesome leading question you just asked for a lead Noah, right there but <laughs> the answer is built right into it you know you can go right on the head right I ju- I, it's funny, I just had a call with a doctor regarding about this whole thing. And he's asking me, you know, right before this, you know, he's just asking me, like, well, Mike, you know, I see some of the other practice doing these numbers. You know, I, I know my numbers could be a lot higher. And, you know, and, you know, you know me for a long time. And I said, I said to him, I, I'll use a, I'll use a, I'll use a real Bill. Okay. Listen, Bill, you know, I, you know, I care about, but you're your own worst enemy. 
that, that, that's the thing. You, you, how you go, so goes the practice, right? So yes, when you step to the front door of that practice every day, you set the tone for the whole day. It's like, it's like you know, your staff shouldn't be talking about, like you, you call them on the way in and the manager goes, okay, guys, he's, he, he's in one of his moods. Be ready. We'll, and they're preparing for how you're going to be when you walk in the door because they know how you're going to be. Shouldn't be that way. You have to walk on eggshells. What what kind? What doctor? We get? Are we getting Doctor Jekyll today? Or are we getting Mister Hyde? You know, that's mm -hmm. the Jekyll and Hyde mass, uh, management and practice doesn't work. You should be a steady, balancing, calming influence, influence, especially in these times. You know, with the sea and all this craziness with COVID and everything else like that. You need to have someone like you know, make make me not jump off the ledge, right? And calm everybody, get them off, walk them off the ledge, calm them down. Same thing with your patients. You know, if you're calm and, and okay with it and, and you're on top of it and everything else, they're going to be okay with it too, right? But how you set the tone for the whole thing. And again, a lot of doctors don't separate that. They bring in their personal life into the practice. They intermesh, you know, the, the, their, the interactions with their team, with their personal life, which is I, I, I just a big no-no. I wouldn't, you're asking for trouble doing that. You know, I'm not saying you should be social with your team and friendly with them and do some team things with them time to time, but there is a line to draw. Right, and you want you want to not cross over that line and in, intermixing in, in team with personal, right? But at the same time, the you know, professional, calm, you know, strong approach going in there that's not reactionary. You know, you don't just blow up on every little thing, and you know, how, it's how you talk to people, it's how you interact with them. That's a big thing. One of, one of my favorite expressions that I've said a thousand times, and the, my clients that listen to this will laugh because they know what I'm going to say. Uh, it's, it's who you're being about what you're doing that makes the biggest difference, right? It's a being this problem. It ain't a doing this problem for most dentists. You know? They know how to do dentistry really well, okay? You know, they know how to do all that you know, uh, clinical stuff really well, right? It's how you be, right? You know, anybody can, you know, like when they call an all, anybody can read a script, okay? But if, you're, but if you're being distracted, you know, and being disinterested and being uncaring and being angry, you know, when, you, when I call you know, call an office, that's not going to translate too well, no matter what script you have. Well, same thing goes for a doctor, you know, you can be the best doctor in the world and a genius at what you do. But if you're being like, you know, uh, you, you know, this way with your team, the negative way with your team, they're not going to relate to that. It's going to set the tone for the whole thing. You know, morale is a very important Again, another episode, put it down for the future, you know, therapy. Morale is a very, very important thing. There's an energy about offices, an energy about spaces that you create, not to get too, you know, esoterical and, and, and be out there. But if you ever walk into a hospital, you know, you, you've been to a hospital. I hope you, you know, you've ever walked into a hospital, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it's all nice and pretty at the front, you know, when you first walk in there and they make it all pretty pretty. As soon as you walk through those double doors, it gets pretty serious pretty quick. Right, mm -hmm. and you walk in there. It's a, it's a, it's a really negative environment. You can feel it. Okay, it smells like death. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not a positive environment to be into, and you can feel how, yeah, how heaviness it is. You don't want to create a heavy environment for patients to or staff to work in. Right, when they walk into that, just kind of pushes people away, and that pushes away your good team too. You know, if you have good people and you want to keep them, you know, like this guy saying to me, "I oh, it's so hard to find good people." Yeah, but maybe you continually push them away because you know you want to create an environment you know, that it, people like to come to. And a statistical survey will say that 70 to 75% of people don't like their job. That's a, that's a big number in America, you know? And you know what the number one reason why they can't stand their job is? Take a guess. They don't like who? Their boss. Their boss, you know? And you're, and you're it, doc. You know, and, and that's, that's the thing. So if you don't want people hating you, you know, or, or the place, you know, not wanting to work there, it's how you, it's how you are with them. It's really important. You know, and if they really are driving you that, I mean, I'm not blaming it all on doctors. If, if they're all dri driving you that crazy and that whatever, why aren't you addressing them? You know, because doctors are, are masters at hiring slow, you know, and firing slow. <laughs> you know, I mean, excuse me, hiring fast and firing slow. That's what they do. Okay. They get them, they got to get people in there to hire them and everything else. There's no vetting process. They don't make them jump through the hoops, do what they're supposed to do. Right. And then, then once they find out, oh, God, I made a mistake. This person really shouldn't be here. And now I'm stuck with them. No, you're not. But they, they let them linger and linger and fester and get worse and worse because they can't let go of them or they don't want to deal with it, right? That's the worst combo. Hiring fast and firing slow. I always say hire slow, right? Take a long time, make people jump through hoops, you know, make sure you put them through a rigorous process and then fire fast. It doesn't work out well, you know, get them the heck out of there, you know, and, 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 and move on before it causes the damage and disharmony in the practice. But going back to what you said, yes, it all goes down to, you know, doctor attitude, you're coming in today and set the tone and how you'd be and being able to if you have a, if you have a rough day 
you know, check in with your team. You have a morning huddle. Look, guys, look, I'm on top of my game today. I got to tell you, a lot, of, a lot of personal stuff going on in my house. You all know that. I'm really going to try to stay on track today. I need your help, support me, help me, help, help keep, keep me up on my game, that kind of thing. You know, that's the kind of dialogue you want to have with your team. You know, it's okay to let people know that, but just don't come in there and unload on them every day and then drag them into all that kind of drama. They have their own, it just drama creates more drama, you know, and they have their own issues. Then you get pissed off when they bring their drama into the practice. When you're doing the same damn thing, you know, you're the drama queen, you're the drama king yourself or drama queen yourself, right? Mm -hmm. so. so when, you know, with the, you know, doctor generally being the person running the practice, but in some cases there's an office manager or practice manager who runs the day-to-day -day operations and, you know, the mark of most leaders is knowing when and how to delegate. Can you, as sort of the tone setter and the head of a dental practice, delegate, you know, dealing with two staff members who are having a dispute, or is this something where you really need to step in and handle yourself? Well, if you have the right manager, I mean, mm -hmm. this, this is one of the, one of the key things I always look for is, do you have a really good, you know, dedicated point person? They may not have that title, because see doctors frequently give, oh, I have to give her the title of office manager. I said, yeah. what's wrong with that? Okay, if she has a good job description, you know, she think, they, they think that they give a, a staff member the title of office manager, immediately this person's gonna go on a power kick with a bullhorn, you know, start yeah. yelling out orders and, you know, they, and, you know and, and think they're royalty. It doesn't have to be that way, right? A good, a good manager, a good office manager, right? He's the quarterback for the team. They're there to call the, you know, call the plays, make the day go the way you're supposed to, so we win while making the rest of the team around them better. And, uh, and also keeping the, all the junk off your plate that you don't want to deal with, okay? You know, you're the personnel manager, you're there. If, you have, if, you, if she's a, the right kind of person, she can make decisions to put people in a room and, and talk it out and straighten it out and resolve this kind of stuff. Or, and really good ones have hiring and firepower. They have the ability to hire people, the ability to let people go if they're not working. And that, that's sometimes easier for a lot of doctors because they don't, they'd rather not deal with that in the first place about them doing it right so it's good to have a person you can fall back on and do that kind of stuff you know because obviously yeah, you have to be that person if you don't have that person you know because a lot of and a lot of people have that are listening to this right now may have the makings of a really great point person or manager in their practice but they really haven't put them on that on that post on that job to so hear you i'm giving you i'm ordaining you manager you know how, how do most office managers come to be you know, but I'm, I'm going to role play that for you. You know, I'm going to walk up. Um, so I walk up to the front desk and say, Michelle, uh, you've been here for, a, I'm, the, I'm the doctor. I walk to the front desk one day and say, Michelle, you've been here for a long time. You put up with the most crap. You're the manager. And it's a blessing, you know, that's a, cat, that's a Christian blessing. You know, it's whatever, you know, if you're, I know you do the star, but you get a blessing and then, and that's it. <laughs> and then you're the manager. Great. Now you just threw me in there and I'm supposed to succeed. You know, that's how it happens. There's a lot, there's a lot more to, you know, creating a management position there, but a good one will take a lot of the stuff off your plate for sure. So I'm okay with that if you have the right person doing it for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, you want to hire slow, you want to fire fast. How is it that you recognize if there's a dispute between, you know, two or more members of the team when there is that one person who is the issue themselves and that the they do need to... <laughs> the ringleader. Well, not even the ringleader, but they're the, the source of the problem. This tension, these disputes are happening, and this one person, you know, is really the reason. How do you recognize that? And then how do you go about making sure that you can get that person out of your practice, you know, in a way that doesn't have them chasing after you with lawyers for quite some time? Yeah, yeah, that's another big one I was talking about before. Um, first of all, you have to do a good investigation. It's called doing the investigation. You know, don't don't mm -hmm. do, you know don't just take things on like opinion. Right? There's, a big, there's a big gap between opinion and investigating and really getting the fact. And being able to separate fact and opinion is a big part of this whole thing. Can we separate? And again, the way you do that is interviewing people privately, let them talk in a, in a safe place, individually, privately, anonymously, talk to you about everything or your manager about everything. And believe me, you'll trace it back to the source. You know, It's just like diagnosing a, 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 a mouth, what's going on. You trace it back to the source of ah, this is what's causing this whole kind of thing. So you can trade it. Same thing with people. You can you, you do a good investigation. You can do that, yes. And you want to make sure that you're, you're up to speed on your um, your your employment stuff because there there are a lot of pitfalls right now. We live in a in a, in a very litigious society. So people are afraid to do anything or rock the boat, right? We have protected classes. 
you know, that you can't talk to a certain way or do certain things. We have all, you know, unfair wage and hour situations. We have hostile work environment situations, um, sexual harassment. It, it runs the gamut these days. And a lot of these claims are frivolous. You know, we just got a disgruntled person who invents things. You know, I, I had a, a bad story not too long ago where a hygienist that the doctor was clashing with set him up basically because he was again doctor disconnect he wasn't connected he basically didn't fill out his his um do his charts so she she did she was doing a lot of it for him so she intentionally made sure didn't put information in the charts so so what she did is when she reported him to the board she could say hey look he's not keeping notes in these charts go back and look at these files i'll show you guess what it was very easy for her to just go and say go right to the people that she was because she set him up you know yep. lost his license for three months because of that you know, at that point, they didn't want to hear that it was a setup or that whatever. How is he going to prove it? Okay, mm -hmm. around the whole thing, you just got to make sure that you have all your, you know, ducks in a row, like uh, having EPLI, which is Employment Practices Liability Insurance, big one. You cannot be operating without that in this day and age. And what e EPLI does, and everybody has some kind of little rider on your program. It's usually about thirty, fifty thousand. That's nothing. You need a million dollar policy no, uh, minimum, you know, because when you, if you have a claim brought against you, even if it's frivolous. You can run you six figures in this day and age with legal fees, not to mention the time, aggravation, everything else. The EPLI is a nice yeah. peace of mind. You, you get the policy, you stick it in the drawer, you let no one know you have it. But get a million dollar policy, it may run you 1,500, 2,000 a year, 2,500 max if you have no pre existing uh, claims against you or whatever, and get that kind of insurance and add it to your, it's just for peace of mind. Because that way, if someone comes after you, EPLI will basically cover your legal fees, settlements, the whole thing, get this person out of your hair. <laughs> which, is like, which may stick in your crop because you know maybe it's frivolous and they don't deserve it but you know would you rather have that fifty thousand come out of your pocket you know or or theirs at the insurance companies and get them out of and, and live and learn you know because it's a losing proposition going to battle with staff members is a losing proposition because the whole system right now is rigged against you okay it is set up to, you're the big bad employer and whatever else and they're the first thing they're going to ask you you know do you have an employee handbook? No, I don't have an employee handbook. You know, ruling in favor of the employee. You know, was the employee made aware of their rights or was brought to their attention that there was an upset or a problem? No, ruling in favor of the employee. You know, do you have an employee file that you created when you sat down and documented and memorialized, you know, your, your upsets with the, no. Ruling, you see, it's, a, it's just a, it, you just don't have those things. Many of you don't, okay? So that's why you want to protect yourself with that. But at the same time, you know, have really good personnel you know, stuff laid in, laid in place like that. So your your uh, your human resources part of your practice. You know, and look, the smaller you are, the less liability you have. If it's you and three staff members, odds are you're not going to have a, a problem. Although I've seen it. The bigger you are, the bigger you operate, the more protection you need to cover yourself when dealing with this kind of stuff. And I'm not trying to say you should never fire anybody. You know, don't get that wrong. You know, you have every right to. You know, for the right reasons uh, to do that. But, but do good documentation about everything is, is, is important. You know, um, how, you know, how you do severance agreements, have them sign off an agreement, things like that. There's, there's different legal. I'm not, again, I'm not a lawyer, nor do I play one on TV, but I have one speaking my program a lot about, and I've absorbed a lot of this information over the years. And it's really important that you're up on at least the basic of this stuff, because again, this is some, again, DDS disconnect that we're not looking at. We don't, how much time do you spend on, on a legal ram, if it, you know, making sure your legal is buttoned up tight? With your practice, you know, same thing when you have upsets with an associate doctor. It's another big area that doctors get killed yeah. on. Because they don't make a good agreement with their associates, you know. And the next thing you know, they're walking away with half your practice. Well, what happened? I said, well, where's your agreement? You know, where's your restrictive covenant? Where's your non-compete? You know, where's your protect your intellectual property? Maybe if there's any, you know, and on, on like that. You don't have any of that, you know, that kind of stuff in place, right? So you're asking for trouble, you know. Oh, but he's a good guy. Yeah, they're all start, they all start out as good guys, right? Until one day they turn bad. You know, so that's why it's so important to have that stuff in place as well. Mm -hmm. Now, amazingly, we're almost a minute session for, uh, you know, today, but I did want to kind of get a little bit to, um, it seems like documentation, both at the front end and throughout any issues that arise is kind of the through line here, that you need things documented up front, and then you need to document as soon as you see a problem emerging and that documentation is gonna give you the protection you need to fall back on and hopefully come out of these issues with your practice intact and your practice working better than it was before. Is that a correct assessment of the yeah. uh, yeah. situation? Yeah, and like I said before, the more in communication, the communication is life, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's the way life works. The more, the more in communication you are with your body, for example, the better it's going to be, you know, dentists know this and I'm no, I'm no clinical person. You know, I don't know anything about clinical stuff, you know, very little, I didn't come in from a clinical background, but, mm -hmm. but, but if a nerve to a tooth is out of communication, you know, cause all problems in practice come from bad or with your staff come from bad or no communication. Okay. So if you're getting bad or no communication to a tooth for a period of time, what's eventually going to happen to that tooth? It's going to get sick and die. Then you have a dead tooth and it's old. That's it. Right. It's got to be replaced. Same thing. So communication is life. Well, the more community, the more in communication you are with your practice, the more life is being breathed into the whole thing every single day, you know, and, the, and, and if you put structures in place for communication to happen on a regular basis, less downfalls. This is the time of year. Do employee reviews every single year. This is the chance for you to, doesn't mean people, doctors don't do employee reviews because they're afraid, oh, if I sit down with my employee, that means I have to give them a raise. doesn't mean that. Okay. There are ways to go and I can teach you how to do employee reviews. So it doesn't always mean raise, you know, but it, but it can be, it's okay to give a, a meritorious increase or do an increase for um, cost of living or whatever every single year, as long as you're raising your fees, but things like morning huddle, starting the day within communication with your whole team that way, staff meetings, having communication that particular way, you know, doing separate outings from time to time that are fun for the team and keep them motivated and excited and things like that. These are, these are ways of staying in communication, keeping staff, and, and, then, and then you're aware of what's going on and, and, and keeping, creating an environment where it's okay that they come to you and communicate with you. And it's okay to open door policy, come in and talk to me. It's okay. If you talk to me in the right way, you know, I'll hear it all day long and I'll be more than happy to take your feedback because your staff tells you so much that you don't even know what's going on, you know, you know, because then you're not aware of what's happening and they'll tell, they know what's going on. And so we spend a lot of time talking to the team every single day. And they have all these amazing the answers they have because they see it every day, you know, and doctors they said they get that tunnel vision and they're not even aware of what's going on in the practice every all the time. And they're disconnected from it, not a communication, but your staff is. So being hearing from them is a great thing. And letting them know that their feedback matters, you know, that it has an impact. And you know what? Hey, look, I talked to him or I talked to her and look at him or look at her. She's making changes now you know, for the benefit right now. She resolved that upset for me. You know, I just did a mediation phone call right before this between a doctor and a manager. And, you know, to teach them how to be able to coexist. And they're both very talented people, but they have a clash and ends every day. And that, that was taking away from them playing the game of dentistry effectively. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a deep, deep topic that we could probably talk on for, you know, several we're 30 doing, minutes. We're not, doing an, we're not doing an hour today? Oh, okay. Uh, That's uh, nice 30 minutes. <laughs> it is... Uh, you know, almost time for us to uh, jump off this session. So I did want to say to everyone watching, if your practice has any challenges that you would like Mike to address in a future episode of 30 Minutes of Therapy, send an email to the email address down below. And if you're looking to uh, reach out to him directly about uh, either his staff driven dental or coaching on demand where you can get a uh, dental coach online when you need them, you can find information on all of that, including a special offer for our viewers down below as well. Mike, thank you so much for joining us on today's broadcast and for helping create this program to help the dental industry. Yeah, I, I really appreciate knowing the opportunity. And I said before, I'd love to hear what you have to people send me your problems. You know, yeah, I love speaking directly about problems. And, and I told Noah, put me on the spot. I can, I'll try to solve anything on the spot with no prep. You know, like we did, we had very little prep for today. Like we said, we both had a crazy life coming off a storm I had out here. And, you know, he was <laughs> busy for a week and we, we just did this off the cuff today. I think it came out great. I love, I love that we talked about today and I hope this was helpful. And I'm looking forward to being back uh, before you know it with another episode. Wonderful. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll see you all next time.